Hello and welcome to the lecture on description. For, this is for English 111. So when we're talking about writing descriptively, a good way to remember that is that writing descriptively uses all five senses. Sight, sound, smell, taste, touch. Okay, so description can be defined as the expression in vivid, vivid language of what the five senses experience. So remember, in a narrative story, you want to explain or how the readers feel like they're there as they're reading their story. They're experiencing what you're experiencing. Um, that gets them really involved. One way to do that is by using the five senses experience as you are describing the situation. Now, how much description should you include? Well, it kind of depends on this. It depends on your audience. When you're writing, if you're going to write for a four-year-old, then you would not use a lot of description. The sky is blue. The grass is green. Okay, that's probably enough description. Um, for this class, for your narrative, your audience is your fellow classmates. So you have lots of different classmates. So imagine other college students. So that's how much that's your audience. So think about, so you wouldn't, don't be too simplistic, but don't be too crazy either. Now, there's two main types of description. There's objective and subjective. Objective and subjective. What are the difference? Well, we'll kind of go you through some examples here so you can figure it out. So, objective basically means no emotions. Descriptions are literal and straightforward. Okay, it is what it is. Doesn't depend on your feeling. Doesn't depend on your own personal opinion. It is is what it is. Okay, or subjective is it's kind of the bills of emotions, or how you're feeling, your opinions. It's, Depends on your point of view. So there's two different ways of doing it. When you're writing a narrative, generally you're telling it from your point of view, so you're going to have a lot more subjective uh, descriptions than objective. So again, let's kind of reinforce the difference here. Let's do a little game. Yay, game time, game time, yay. So are these objective or subjective? Let's take a look. Objective or subjective. So the chair was comfortable. Is that statement objective? Or is that subjective, based on what we just told you? Think about it for a second. Objective or subjective? And we'll go over the answers in a few minutes. Okay, let's look at this one. The house is blue. Is that an objective statement or a subjective statement? Huh? What is it? Hmm. Let's look at the next one. Disneyland is a happy place. Is that an objective statement or a subjective statement? Okay. That was a little tricky. Right, let's look at the next one. Driving while texting can cause accidents. Is that statement objective or is that subjective? Is that just the way it is or is that how you feel about it? Now, using the same picture, consider this. People who text while driving are stupid. Is that stating something that's objective or is that subjective? Hmm, a little tricky. Okay. Let's see, how'd you do? Let's look, look at it. These are objective or subjective. All right, this first one here. The chair was comfortable. That is subjective because it depends on your personal opinion. That chair may be very comfortable to some people. It may not be very comfortable to other people. Okay, it just kind of depends. All right, so, you know, it's a chair, that's for sure. It's a brown chair, that's objective. But comfortable? Comfort's kind of a matter of opinion, so that would be subjective. The house is blue. Is that objective or subjective? That would be objective. Objective. Because it just is what it is. It's not like you wake up like, I'm in a really good mood. That house is yellow today. No, it doesn't depend on your opinion or your feelings. Okay? It is what it is. The house is blue. So therefore, it is objective. Disneyland is a happy place. Okay? Is that objective or subjective? Well... It's a little tricky, but that would be a subjective statement. Why would that be the case? Because Disneyland is designed to be a happy place, but there are people who do not like to go to Disneyland. They don't like big crowds. They may be scared of the rides. To them, it is not a happy place. So that is a matter of opinion. So Disneyland is a happy place is a subjective statement. Okay, this thing here. Driving while texting can cause accidents. Is that objective or subjective? 
that would be objective. Objective. Because it just is what it is. It's not a matter of opinion. Okay? There's studies that prove that. Where this saying, people who text while driving are stupid. Okay? That would be a subjective statement because that's your opinion that they're stupid. Why are they stupid? Because they cause accidents. Okay? But it's still more subjective because it's kind of your opinion. Stupid is the big word there. Okay, so tips to remember the difference. Objective. Okay, object. Objects don't have feelings. My computer mouse, my keyboard, my desk, my chair, they're objects. They don't feel anything. Okay, therefore they are objective. This is one way to remember it. Subjective. Um, sub means under, like submarine or subway means under. So these are under the, you know, your feelings are generally under the surface. That's how you feel. That's the way that I remember the difference. Yeah, okay. Now, how much detail is too much? Again, we talked about it kind of depending on your audience, but let's give you kind of an example. Um, so we got Goldilocks and Three Bears. If you've ever remember the story, so in Goldilocks and Three Bears, Goldilocks, you know, she would try one thing and it would be, uh, I think it's a porridge, I think it was too hot or it was too cold. And then she found one that was just right. So, you know, the same with the bed. The bed was too soft or it was too hard. And there was one that was just right. So the amount of detail you want to use is just the right amount. Well, how much is that? That kind of comes with practice and understanding who your audience is. So, example of detail. There's going to be a whole bunch of text here, but hang on. I'm going to read through this. Give you an example here. Here we go. Tall, thick, green grass grew wildly and ferociously around the aged, worn-down, reddish-brownish brick estate, which had been in its prime when big band music filled the airwaves and people chanted for the war, the final war to end all wars, to finally come to a bitter and unfulfilling conclusion. Linen, spotted and torn from overuse and neglect, hung from a clothesline, flapping anxiously in the midsummer breeze, as if they couldn't wait to once again return indoors, away from the threat of impending rain, even if that meant returning to the decrepit house. All right. Is there a lot of detail in there? Oh, goodness, yes, there is. Tall green grass, aged, worn down, brick estate, spotted and worn. Oh, my gosh, that is filled with detail. Now compare that to this one. The house looked old. Kind of the extremes, okay? <laughs> Basically, you're kind of describing the same thing. You got an old house. So, I would say the first example, this one here, way too much detail. Way too much detail. This one here, not enough detail. Can I get the difference? Yeah, I hope so. Okay. So, a good tip for using description is use the best details and describe them vividly, not vaguely. So, if you're trying to describe something, what's the best way to describe it? Examples of vagueness. The food was yucky. Okay, well, that kind of describes it. But what food? And what made it yucky? That's, you know, that's a detail, but it's not very vivid. Here's an example of a vivid detail. The bacon was soggy and undercooked. It made me gag when I took a bite of it. Yeah, see the difference? See? So we're talking, we kind of say, we are just, we're telling you exactly what it is. It's more... It's a, bacon instead of just food. What made it yucky? Soggy and undercooked. Okay. It made me gag. There's the taste when I took a bite of it. So again, more description. So when you're writing your narrative, make sure you use good description. That'll make for a better, more enjoyable paper. All right, go and write.